Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. Uh, my name is David Harris. I'm the Managing Director at the Charles Hamilton Houston Institute for Race and Justice. And I want to welcome you all here on behalf of Harvard Law School and Harvard University for what we think is a, a really important and uh, overdue event. Uh, and uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time today uh, talking about it. I think we'll hear a lot about the context of why we're here over the next couple of days. We have a number of events, as you'll see in your program, that I think are, are very interesting and diverse and will uh, uh, benefit us all. So I'm not going to dilly-dally here. I'm going to uh, turn this over to John Stauffer, who needs very little introduction from me. Uh, I just in preparing here, I just realized he's, he's moving into the, the screen, the screen act field and he's doing a little bit of, I understand, uh, uh, different uh, turn, but uh, he is going to introduce our speaker today, and we're very fortunate to have both of them with us. So with no further ado, Professor John Stauffer. Thank you, David, and thanks for helping make this possible. I'd also like to thank Amy. Is she here? She, no, she's uh, really led the way for um, really getting this off the ground and making it happen. She contacted me in the fall and about the idea of a conference, and I said I love the idea, but I was already overcommitted for the year, and uh, she really made it happen. And this is from someone who is, was working at the, uh, in Washington, D.C., not even affiliated with Harvard. I'd also like to thank uh, Tom Horks. Where's Tom? Raise your hand. Uh, you'll see an exhibition uh, that he uh, curated and put on, Don Yacovone, who's right there, uh, Mass Humanities, uh, and uh, Primary Source. We have a representative from Primary Source. Uh, and everyone else who helped make this conference happen. It's my great pleasure to um, welcome and introduce Jim Stewart, the James Wallace Professor of History Emeritus at McAllister, McAllister College. He is, as most of you probably know, one of the preeminent scholars of abolitionism and of the complex relationships between social reform, race, and the political process. He's published a dozen books and over 50 articles on the problems of slavery and abolition in the United States, including Holy Warriors, which is the standard and best synthesis of American abolitionism, which was revised in 1997 and has been translated into numerous languages. I don't even know if Jim knows how many languages, but I say that as a way to convey that this has achieved truly world recognition Abolitionist Politics and the Coming of the Civil War, which was a recent collection of essays. And Jim has published numerous biographies of abolitionists, including Joshua Giddings and the Tactics of Radical Reform in 1970, William Lloyd Garrison and the Challenge of Emancipation in 1992, To Heal the Scourge of Prejudice, <clears throat> The Life and Writings of Hosea Easton, 1999, Venture Smith and the Business of Slavery and Freedom, 2010, which is technically a collection of essays, uh, but collectively functions, in my view, as a biography. And of course, Wendell Phillips, Liberty's Hero from 1986. Professor Stewart's book on Phillips is not only the most recent biography, but the most thorough and the most penetrating. Throughout his 40-some years in the academy, and he just told me he's technically been retired for the last, what, 10 or so, he's been a true friend and inspiration to anyone interested in social reform movements, especially in the 19th century. Uh, and I say that um, truly and sincerely. I mean, when I was a graduate student, he was an indispensable to me. He was uh, always willing to read an essay or a manuscript. Uh, he, really treats the term colleague and collegiality in its uh, original sense. He's not only a scholar of abolitionism, but an abolitionist himself. He founded Historians Against Slavery, which addresses human trafficking, and he's active in the abolitionist organization, notforsalecampaign.org, and recently he, many of his essays and his public addresses have connected 19th century abolitionism with the contemporary or modern um, uh, movement to end human trafficking, what some people call modern slavery. Please join me in welcoming Professor Jim Stewart.
Okay, I'm going to turn on my mic, and you're going to tell me whether it works or not, okay? Usually they don't. Does it? Oh, good. Okay. John, that was a wonderful introduction, and I didn't recognize myself, but thank you anyway. Uh, it's really just a, a, both a delight and kind of a terror to be here, because the person that I'm going to try and introduce to you is a very, very challenging person to try to reanimate in the 21st century on the uh, 200th anniversary of his birth. And <clears throat> so I'm a little uh, daunted by the task in front of me. But before I go any further, I think that it's important to get the historical memory part of this title uh, into play. And the way to do that is to be able to remember that in 1911, at the Park Street Church here in Cambridge, a guy by the name of Wendell Phillips Stafford, who happened to be the Chief Justice of the DC Supreme Court, his parents had named him after Wendell Phillips convened a meeting of the NAACP to do the centenary uh, uh, celebration and recognition of Wendell Phillips. If Amy hadn't decided that she wanted to do it, no one would have remembered. I wouldn't have remembered. I've lived with this guy ever since I was 32 years old, I'm now 71. Completely passed over my head, it did not pass over the head of the NAACP, Crisis Magazine, W.E.B. Du Bois, and particularly in this case, Wendell Phillips Stafford, who said, we have reason, and the, re the, the, uh, the focusing of this meeting was on the Deep South and the problem of lynching, and the terrible problem of the public torturing of black bodies all across the South during this time. And here's what he had to say. He said, we have reason to believe that the master spirits of the earlier crusade, Wendell Phillips's crusade, are with us now. In every charge we make against the forces of oppression, we have a right to feel that Garrison and Phillips are riding at our side. 